on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. Here are the whiskeys we're going to be discussing today. So we have from Balvenie the Balvenie French Oak 16-year-old single malt whiskey. From Glendronach, one of our favorites, uh, we have the Batch 12 Cast Strength Glendronach. <laughs> Justin's favorite guy. <laughs> and from Old Putney, we've got the 12-year-old, the Old Putney 15, the Old Putney 18, and the Old Putney 25. <laughs> Again. Yeah, right. The Old Putney Huddert. And from Ardbeg, we have the Ardbeg Heavy Vapors. So strap yourself in, kids. We're in for a bumpy ride. I am very aroused. We'll be right back after this break. live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Hey, yes, it's sipping time again. Hello and welcome to this Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. That's because we're not on at 1. That's true. They moved hee-haw, so we're good. If we were on at 1, we'd be the best thing on at 1. I don't think I've seen hee-haw in 40 years. Where are you watching hee-haw? It's, it's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Like everything. Reruns. Oh, well, if you go on cable, then they sell like reruns the whole thing on, on DVDs, show. like all of them. Hand me that. Love I mean, reruns. If you just hook up an, an antenna to your TV, you're going to get like 60 stations. Mm. What's an antenna? Exactly. What is that? <laughs> an antenna? Yeah. It's what you have left I after mean, you cut the cord. I mean, we should be cutting the, cutting the cord from the cable, too. It just should be all just uh, Ethernet. Well, he, it's not like he watches TV, he just sits in the basement corner just playing with his toys anyway. So what's the difference? I like the Apple TV Plus, man. There's some good shows. Slow Horses is Wait, amazing. He doesn't have any toys. I thought he plays with himself. He just he sleeps under the porch because he doesn't have sweat glands. Oh. So, well, this, <laughs> this is Made Man Bob. And joining me are Made Man Brent. Torture in the basement today. Mm-hmm. And Made Man Maury. I'm excited. It's going to be deep today. I wore my thigh high wellies. And good old boy, Justin. It's going to be fantastic today, boys and girls. And Harm, who's been watching too much H and G TV, because apparently he has to arrange everything on the table. Well, I'm trying to take pictures, man. I, I I could do banter, or I could just post to Facebook. How about you focus on the microphone and worry about pictures later? I'm talking straight into the microphone, baby. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, thank you, Bob, for having me, because today I actually mean it. This yeah, is, exactly. This is a good show. See, this is the good one. All right, kiss, go ahead, kiss the, kiss ring. the ring. Kiss the ring. You can kiss the ring. It's fine. Give me that bottle, please, Brian. Yeah. Well, this is pretty. Good. This is a pretty good day. So uh, our sip segments are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, coffee, and pretty much anything else you can sip. And here are the whiskeys we're going to be discussing today. So we have from Balvenie the Balvenie French Oak 16 year old single malt whiskey from Glendronach. One of our favorites. Uh, we have the Batch 12 Cast Strength Glendronach. <laughs> Justin's favorite guy. <laughs> and from Old Putney, we've got the 12-year-old, the Old Putney 15, the Old Putney 18, and the Old Putney 25. <laughs> Again. Yeah, right. The Old Putney Huddert. And from Ardbeg, we have the Ardbeg Heavy Vapors. So strap yourself in, kids. We're in for a bumpy ride. So it's not going to be good. Oh, it's going to be great. No, it's not going to be oh, good. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Not only is it going to taste great, but we get to watch Brent. So it's twice as much fun. Oh, I 
can't wait. All right, so we're going to have Justin tell us all about our Sips ratings. Oh, yeah. This is Randy, the Macho Man Savage, coming at you. One sip. Give me a glass of water to wash out my mouth. Gunga bean, water. Gunga bean, bring water. Bring water. Two sips. Nice, but what else do you have? Well, isn't that nice? Three sips. Hmm. Interesting. What was this again? Hold on. Our system crashed. There you go. <laughs> Interesting. With a voice like that, of course it would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Four sips. Let's keep this secret to ourselves. Pour me another. That's classified. Five sips. Oh my, I was unaware anything could be this good. Oh my goodness. Yes! 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 Mm, yeah, I didn't no. buy it. I not didn't buy it. it. Not buy it for Wait, a second. We had a Scottish guy who was going to do AI, but it kept coming up syntax error. So, Randy came. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm not buying it. So, all right, well, let's move on to our first whiskey. And we're going to have Maury tell us about that one. Thank you, Bob. The first whiskey today will be the Balvini French Oak, 16-year-old, 95 proof, 47.5% ABV. This is the first of the Balvini finishes to explore French Oak. The Balvini French Oak takes Balvini single malt whiskey, which was initially matured in American oak casks, and finishes it in French oak casks that previously held wine from the French... uh, Charente Vineyards. Pinot de Charente. Thank you. Pinot de Charente is a fortified wine made from unter- unfermented grape juice in which a cognac, eau de vie, is added and then matured. The Balvini USA brand ambassador, Lauren Cousins, suggested malt master David C. Stewart, MBE, Quiet, ex- explore these casks after a trip to the region with his family where he fondly remembers sipping the aperitif. Nobody asks for Pinot de Chiron except for French Canadians. I sell two of them and only when the snowbirds are in town. It's a weird thing. What yeah. is it? It's not cognac. It's not, It's basically cognac and and the the wine that cognac is made from. The the um, eau de vie. The the well, it's not the eau de vie. It's, it's as you're right. It's the, the eau de vie, not the cognac. It's not been aged properly. It's the brandy that they made before it's been aged to be called cognac, and the wine. It's uh, what are the what are the, what are the grapes in cognac? Uh, Columbard and Fall Blanche and something else I can't remember off the top of my head, but the wine before it was from before it was uh, distilled and the distillate got mixed together and uh, by accident one time, and that became an aperitif called Pinot de Charente. So it's You're, weird. It's a it's a niche product. There are many You're, French Canadians in town right now <laughs> in uh, South Florida. So <laughs> You're right, more I'm he sure never interrupts selling you. a lot. <laughs> You're right. He never interrupts you. Just go Whatever. to any of the county parks. Uh, but the Caribbean cast well, finish that. was the, the thing that really made this nice, too. Yes. Okay. Well, in any event, that's where it was matured. The Balvini uh, brand ambassador had suggested this, and he drinks it, and he thought that this uh, this release will now become the first permanent addition to the Balvini cask finish range since 2013, when the Caribbean cask finish was first introduced. So, this expression is extremely light in color. It's a very, very pale straw color. On the nose, it's very floral. There's lots of flowers on the nose, hints of grass, and even a little bit of of apple skin. I the- get full on apple, baby. It's not just the skin, but you get you I get, get full on apple. My apple, I found the apple blew off early. Is but it red me, or green? That's what I can't figure out. For me, it was red. I didn't really get a lot of green apple. Um, on the palate, it's definitely tangy. It's citrusy. There's lemon rind. There's some grapefruit. Uh, there's some glazed fruit. There's a little spice. There's even a little hint of ginger. And then the finish is pleasant and light, nice and medium. Uh, this is a pleasant wine. Uh, wine. This is a pleasant whiskey. It was very interesting. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was bright. I thought it was fresh. Um, it's Balvenie. 
Yeah. It's Balvini. Not a 40-year-old, though. That's all you need to know. Well, yeah, but it's different than most Balvinis. I mean, I love everything they make. I sold all my 40-year-old, man. I've tried to ask them for more. There's nothing left in the state. I mean, Balvini is classic. I mean, they're one of the few distilleries that does their own malting of barley. Most people are buying the barley already malted. They've got the malting floor. You can tour it. It's amazing. It's an amazing place. Well, it's some of it. A portion of the barley they malt. It's, well, it's, malt it's smaller, it's of smaller it. production yeah. than like Glenfiddich owns. Yeah, the top there. of the hill, it's it's a giant factory, but yeah. Balvenie is still just it's it's, it's their more it's, niche product. Yeah, yes, but that's the point. Of course, they don't malt every last ounce of their barley, but they do malt barley, which is yeah. more than most places yeah. can say. Almost nobody does. It, Nobody's yeah. malting their own barley. Yeah, they actually try. You know, well, so. you've got the small distilleries in, in, on Isla that might do like Kilhoman malts 100% of its bar- barley, but they're so tiny. You know, all these tiny producers are different. Correct. Alvini makes so much more. But this is a lovely whiskey. I thought it was a little more on the feminine style. It's not very masculine. It's not very powerful. It's got finesse. It's got style. It's got grace. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, I thought it was lovely. Harm, what'd you think? I agree with everything you said for some reason. Oh, my I God. Gonna... I'm going to fall uh, one, over. One thing, though, I did get on the nose that you didn't get was brioche. Get a little bit of brioche with the apple. Oh, I did get it. I just wanted to leave you something oh, to say. God, it's so good. The flowers, I can't identify them, but they're just, they're earthy. They're geraniums. Okay, they're geraniums. <laughs> I don't know what geraniums smell like. They're earthy and they're gorgeous. And uh, on the palate, I got a little more malt than you did. I got a little hint of light orange and vi- I got violet on the palate. Uh, but it just goes on forever. Even though it's light and feminine, the finish is long. Justin, what do you think? So on the nose, I got some pledge, and in a good way, <laughs> lemon pledge. And then you on were the hopping palate, out of the kid, were you? No doubt. Statue of limitations is run on that. And then on the on the palate, I got like some lemon, vanilla, and then I got beets. That's what? What the heck? What? I got beets. Roasted, boiled, how? Borscht? Rush, rush it borscht. Borscht. Like beet soup. You are so weird. Yeah, he's weird. But no, you maybe not because there's no but earthy. that's what I got. We, we both got this earthy component, right? The violets are earthy. Yeah. Geraniums, I guess, are earthy. I mean, that's what good Bar- borscht. Called out, not right? bad borscht. So maybe that earthy, I don't know, man. <laughs> You're hanging out with Russians. Maybe we should bring this to the borscht belt <laughs> yeah. and go spend the weekend. I'm half Russian and half Austrian, so it kind of makes sense. I so what else you got? Beets. So, so but you freaked me out with the beats. <laughs> it was very tangy, and I definitely got like some root beer mixed in with the beats. Now you're on crack. And, roots. Uh, the finish was roots. Long. I could see beet is a root vegetable, but you had me at roots. Root beer, you lost me. Like good root beer from Vegas that they brew like beer, but no alcohol. It's like uh, what's it? Queens Hotel, really good. So, yeah. what do you think, Brent? Yeah, I got. Oh, I, I mean, that. on the nose, I got dandelions and apples. Is what I picked up on the nose. That was, I, I like, was like the dandelion note. That's, you know, good. The, that's good. The um, you know, dandelions are quite healthy. They can cure cancer. Oh, that's They're a quite great tasty. Thing, the greens. Yeah. So, you know, but we'll be back and uh, yep. tell you about this after the break. Hey, and we're back. And Brent was just finishing up his thoughts on the Balvenie French oak. What'd you What'd you think? Yeah, on the palate, you know, it was. I got some of those, uh, some of those fruit notes that everybody else got and stuff. And you know, it's one of those ones things I enjoyed. It's not a Belvini forty, but I enjoyed it still nothing the same. Nothing's a Belvini forty. No, nothing. You can't. You just can't that. hold on I to know that. that. But you can't hold on to it. You're never gonna I, have I anything have that hold, good again. <laughs> I have to hold on to it. The, the, the secondary on Belvini forty is ten grand now. The, That's not a shock. Yeah, no. well, yeah, I believe me if I had the means, <laughs> if I had the means, yeah, I I definitely would have one. But so what do we what do you think about the sixteen, uh, Bob? I think it's fantastic. Um, it, it, I agree, it's a very feminine uh, sort of blend, um, but it's just so well done, like everything they do. Uh, and and figuring the cast that they got this from, this is not the flavor I thought that they would get out of it. So it again, it just shows. Well, Pinot de Chirant is quite floral, but this doesn't have that cognac note at exactly, all. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have that that apricot and spice. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Do you have any open bottles of Pinot de Chirant at your store? I've sold 
almost all of them. I'm not sure if I have anything left. But both I have both of them? Is it expensive? Yes, yeah. No, I sell, I sell two different brands. Is it expensive? No, Pinot de Chiron's not expensive. It's, it's like $30 bottle of wine. Well, we're going to be rating the Balvenie French Oak 16-year-old four sips. That's classified. So that takes us on to our next whiskey, and we're going to have Justin tell us about that one. So now we get to talk about Glendronach Cast Strength Batch 12. 58.2% alcohol by volume, or 116.4 proof. Glendronach was established by founder James Allardyce in 1826 as one of Scotland's earliest licensed distilleries. Currently owned by Brown Foreman, this 12th edition of Cast Strength Expression was expertly crafted by master blender Rachel Berry from a marriage of Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry Casks. She is amazing. Everything she touches is magic. She's my hero. This is a beautiful light brown color. It's bronze. And there's like a mochaccino and a cappuccino that got married with some orange rind and some beautiful fruit, a uh, little bit of the cherry, Luxardo cherry juice you get when you drink the end of the jar after you ate all the cherries out. Yeah, I'm that I put guy. it in my Diet Coke. I love oh, that cherry juice. Oh, that's so a great good. idea. It's so good. It's pure wow. sugar. You just put that's it in the Diet Coke. That's a diabetic <laughs> coma. Put it in the regular okay, Coke. So I'm diabetic, but I will occasionally put some Luxardo syrup in my Diet Coke. Just so, you know. I don't well, know why you're, using, why you're using Diet Coke. Why don't you just put it in regular Coke? Yeah, you might yeah. as well. Yeah. Might as well just go in a coma. It's like <laughs> shooting yourself with a 22, man. Just go ahead and up it, you know? On the palate, I got this rich, dark wood with some sweet milk chocolate or even white chocolate, really, on this one. A little bit of orange peel and ginger and the finish is just long and complex. I love this. What did you think, Maury? Wow. I, I, I'm not sure I'm prepared to follow that. But let me try. I thought this was delicious whiskey. I, I loved I love where you were going with the creaminess on the nose and you know the fruit. I thought that was spot on. On the palate, I, I really found it to be um, really interesting. Uh, this orange, a little hint of almond, a little hint of crystallized ginger. There was definitely some uh, chocolate and tiramisu notes. Uh, I thought it was really interesting whiskey. Uh, really fascinating. What do you think, Brent? Yes. Dev interesting is the word because it's not like something you normally pick up and, and just enjoy. This one is... Is you gotta dissect it a little bit. Yeah, you do you, you do. The I don't it's been a long time since I had a fruit cake, but that's what I got right off the bat when I was when I was nosing this. Was like, oh my god, it brings me back to many Christmases ago when no, somebody I that, like good fruit cake. Somebody no. somebody you didn't like would no, send no, you a no. fruit I cake. I got like a chocolate covered orange rind. Yeah. No, on the there's on orange the, uh, and chocolate. It's, yeah, on the, no, on the you both of ginger, you got a lump of coal. There's, there's ginger, there's <laughs> They're cake well, it, batter. There's dried fruit. Well, no, on the palate, on the palate, you get it's like taking a bite of uh, like an orange chocolate, uh, uh, like an orange chocolate orange balls that they chocolate. get Thank with you. ginger, with you know, with uh, seasoned with ginger. So you take a bite of that, and that's what you got. You don't got have that. enough Christmas fruit orange cake experience. Ginger, to comment. candied pears, candied cherries. It's all. Mm. It's a fruit cake. Like tastes, you said, well, you said like the first a, time, Brent. You were on the right. You were on the right track. Tastes yeah, like no, a high I, end Dalmore now product. Now I know why your nick where your nickname comes from. Yeah, Harm you your fruit cake. Sig I, I lived in New Orleans, and we had these fruit cakes made by these monks. That people would go all over, from all over the country would 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 buy these cakes from these monks. That's the kind of this is the good fruit cake. It's not the cake you give your relatives <laughs> that gets passed around year after year. Quacks and you yeah. want. Quacks you get it one year, yeah. you get passed to somebody else the next year. Regifted. <laughs> That's the same fruit cake. It's been regifted for the last thirty. Yeah, years. There's only one. Exactly. It just it just travels around the world. <laughs> there's only one fruit cake. Yeah. Uh, is that, that that's like it's in Albania this month? In case you were wondering, right. is that from Hitchhiker's Guide Guy from the Galaxy too? <laughs> is that just one fruit cake in the entire universe? Right. Uh, it's just so. so 
delicious though yeah well this is beautiful it's just i mean it, like like you thought it was not gonna be i mean it's like we've yeah. been we've been very fortunate to have the last several of the cast drinks um from glendrona and this is really the first project that rachel did when she took over from brown foreman her first project was three years of getting her all the bad cast yes yeah, but this was the first brand that she turned yeah, right right and those has things. never looked back yeah. And I have a small, I have one of these small ones like this that I got her to sign for me when she was in Miami and yeah. tried not to completely fanboy and Wayne worlds on her. And, and you just, failed. You know, oh. I, I completely <laughs> failed. Yeah. I, I probably creeped her out. I don't know. But yeah, it was just, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I, she, she's an absolute genius. She's never missed, not on anything I've ever had. And this is an absolutely fantastic yeah. whiskey. I uh, got to geek out with her that day, too. It was great. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's just so good. So we're going to be rating the Gwendrona Cast Strength Batch Number 12, four sips. That's classified. So let's have Brent tell us about our next whiskey. I can't wait to mess up these names. First off, Old Pulteney. Putney. It's pronounced Putney. Putney. Spelled Putney. Yeah. So that's what we're working. So the, the 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 Putney distillery was established in Wick in 1826 by James Henderson and continued operations for nearly a century until it was sold to James Watson and Company. You got the names good so far. Well. Henderson, uh, Watson, you're all right. A Dundee blending house in 1920. So Watson's was first acquired by John Dewar and Sons and in 1925 became part of the distillery's company. Wick imposed prohibition in 1930, causing the distillery to close, and the town remained dry until 1947. It's <laughs> yeah, a bad thing, you know? It's like what happened over here, you know? So, I'd leave. I'd just, I'd move. Yeah, the distillery reopened in 1951 under the ownership of uh, attorney Bertie Cumming, the owner of... Belbert Distillery. Paul Blair. Yeah, see, I told there you I was going to mess that one up. No, you pronounce the L there, and you don't in this one. <laughs> you, you know, that's... Keep <laughs> going. Yeah, so so Hiram Walker and Sons purchased Putney, Putney in 1955. They renovated the facility in 1958 and 59, and then closed the floor maltings at the time. In 1961, Putney was again sold, and this time to Allied Breweries, which became Allied... Dominique. Domec. Yeah, who use the world who use the whiskey in their blends? They also sold casks to Gordon and McVeigh. McPhail, sold the, he just misspelled that. Yeah, sorry. Who sold the whiskey as an eight-year-old single malt? Allied operated the distillery until it was sold to Inverhouse Distilleries in 1995, who bottled the whiskey as a single malt brand. So what we have here is the old Putney, twelve-year-old single malt whiskey. It's forty percent ABV, eighty proof. This expression is matured in air-dried, hand-selected ex-bourbon casks. Very common thing. The, the color is a, a, a dark, dark straw, kind of going towards brown. Um, on the nose, you get vanilla. You get this vanilla and you get oats. So you pick up the vanilla and oats, and then on the palate, it's just, it's just a smoothness. You get this right off the bat. You get this like uh, if you had like you know like salt water that was uh, like tamed down and smoothed out, you know, like a really light salt water. You get that with you some, don't get uh, any lemon on this. I get a little. Well, hold on, you, I'm not done with it. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so I get that. I get that off the right off the bat. That that little saltiness, and then I get some. Uh, it's like a chocolate peanut. Um, a little bit of a, a little bit of citrus there. The I lemon like the citrus. Way he, he enunciated that properly. You know, chocolate and so, <laughs> <laughs> chocolate. The first time he pronounced a T. A chocolate what? <laughs> so, and disappointing your fans. Go ahead. Right, and uh, so it's. I love this expression. This one here, I was very happy with. I I think it's the right proof for it. Um, easy drinker. I th- forty proof. I think is too low for it. Well, I agree with Harm. You know, it's just a nice, easy. It's drinker. entry level. This is this is a this is your everyday Scotch sipper. It's an introduction to the line. It's beautifully done. It's well made. There's nothing wrong with it, except the proof is too low. But it's uninspiring. <laughs> it, it needs a little bit more proof. I think a little more proof would turn the flavor up by a couple notches. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's beautifully made, but uh, we'd like to see a little more. 
Yeah, Justin. So I, I'm wearing this as cologne right now, and I expect to have Get a lucky. positive result chicks. later. Yes, Get all the a, chicks, baby. A positive result later. I got honey bunches of oats, and then a very delicate. Like Asian honeydew melon thing going on before I get the light salt finish. I don't get that melon at all. Oh, Asian honeydew melon. Like an Asian honeydew melon. Yeah, like like when you get the honeydew melon cake from the Asian store and you eat that, you get that. Never and had one. I think this punch is way above its weight. Now, I agree 80 proof's a little low, but if you just put a lot of it in your mouth and drink it fast... It almost tastes like 85 proof. Nobody put this water in it. This is delicious. Right? I, I wouldn't put water in it. It's already got enough I, water. I put in water it. in it. Did you? Did it I help put water it? In it. I, I don't know that it helped it. I think it uh, It really brought the salt forward to it for me. So I like that I like that um that honeydew note from he's talking about now because I didn't until he said Not it, honey any honeydew, Japanese honeydew. Japanese honeydew. But I, to me, I got some citrus, and you didn't get any citrus. No, I said I got a little bit of a lemon, yeah, okay. a little bit of lemon citrus on there. All right. Bob, what'd you think? Again, honeycomb, citrus. It's extremely well made, very well put together. Um, that cereal note's good, too. Like he said, he said, what'd you call it? Honey bunches honey of oats? Honey bunches of yeah. oats. Yeah that, yeah, that was a good note, too. Yeah. yeah. Or what was the other one? Honeycomb with sugar bear? You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, honeycomb yeah. cereal. Right, yeah. right. It's, that serial notes yeah. there. I mean, again, I, I, I always, you know, so many scotches come in at eighty. I, I prefer higher proof. I'm, I'm I an American. Too, but I'm, I mean, I, I see where I see where Brett's going. It, it's still good. Oh but no, it's it's great. There's a lot of yeah. eighty proof ones that are disappointing. This is not oh, yeah. disappointing. Oh, no, 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 not disappointing at you all. You need to drink yeah. a lot of it at once. Yeah. Like a couple of ounces <laughs> just, per pour. Fill your mouth with it. I think I think <laughs> he's onto you won't something. Get enough flavor. Maybe we should try that. Maybe we should like drive a motorcycle really fast while drinking yes. it really fast, and yes. it would speed up. And we'd go back in time. Drink more. That's that's. Well, my we're going to be rating the old Putney twelve-year-old single malt. Well deserved three sips. Interesting. So let's go on to our fifteen. We're going to have Harm tell us about that. All right. Thanks, Bob. The old Putney fifteen-year-old single malt whiskey is forty-six percent ABV or ninety-two proof. It is an expression that's aged in second fill bourbon barrels and finished in first fill Oloroso, Oloroso sherry butts. The color is a dark mahogany. This is the darkest Beautiful whiskey color. at the table. Dark, dark, as dark. As I'm the darkest man at the table. So I'm doing this. I one. don't it's see color. Gorgeous. Me either, you racist. But I smell this. Oh my God. This is an orange peel bomb. So Oloroso sherry, generally you get red fruits, but here I'm getting, the, I'm getting this orange. I'm getting orange peel and fennel and leather and vanilla, and adding water gave me caramelized apple. You have to add the water to this one. Yeah, this water. Must, water brought caramel apple. Add. I didn't add water, but I'll try it. Yeah, this was a, I had must add water. I underlined it twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, you know. the the water brought out candied cherries as well, but that that took air as well. So on the palate, my first to- note says orange push pop. Remember those push pops? Yeah. Orange vanilla push pops. And then cherry and uh, what's that? I can't read that. Licorice. That's the say. And the finish is long. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mouth coating, great mouth feel. It just covers every part of your palate. It's silky. It's um. It's not velvety. It's just silky. It's just smooth and beautiful, with tons of fruit, and it just goes on forever and ever. I freaking love this whiskey, Bob. What do you think? If you don't like this whiskey, you can get out of my damn basement. That's all I'm telling you. Sorry, Brent. It's nice seeing you. It's no, just, I, no it's I'm got staying such here. I'm staying, I'm staying because. Yeah. I mean, just the nose on this thing is just so rich and just the sherry note it's on luscious. it. Luscious. Just, you could cut it with a knife. I mean, that's, it's just beautiful on the nose, but on the palate. Mm. That orange or nectarine, it's gorgeous. There's that, that beautiful beautiful orange note you're getting some of that I, I get some of the nuttiness out of the sherry it's just so well done i mean just so well done i mean i don't think i could improve on this if i tried what the rest of you guys think yeah so i have orange caramel apple mm-hmm just yeah. an orange caramel apple. That's what I have. But the caramel apple didn't come out till I put the water in. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I wrote on here. Must add water because mm-hmm. uh, I was kind of I was a little underwhelmed at first. 
before I added the water. But after that, I it's one of one of my favorites today. Honestly, so. I loved it before the water. I loved it more and equally, but differently after, after the water. The water yeah. yeah, I thought it was great. It was way. yeah. It was it was different with the water. I won't say it was better. I it will was say different. it was different. But both ways, it was fantastic. And look how you can I always tell knew you went both ways. You can Bob. tell. You can tell. There's, there's no. There's no chill filtration here. Look how cloudy it gets with just yeah. a little bit of water. This is it's oily. It's but the co- the color on this is just fantastic. I mean, it's just it's so dark. I I got the silkiness that Harmeet got, and then I got mango lassi and camel unfiltered menthol. You are broken inside. First off, it's mango lussy. Oh, thank you. Lassie. Lassie's a dog. Lussie is the drink. I appreciate I, that. I, I will give correction. you the mango, but the menthol is cigarettes. At the end. At the end. Yeah, camel unfiltered oh. menthol. It's all subtle. Right, all right. Just say the right thing. <laughs> say the thing I want you to say. Your soul is so damaged. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you, anybody else get menthol? These are, the these are my childhood or? memories. Yeah. What do you want? Keeping in mind, he was kept in a box until he was seventeen. So more yeah, or less, a box in the basement. I'll give you the Actually, I was, I was, I was, I was left to wander the streets at will. There was no keeping me in a box. They, I don't have helicopter right. parents. Well, let's move on. So we're yeah. going to be reading the old buddy, fifteen-year-old single malt whiskey, a well-deserved five sips. Yes. Oh my Easy. goodness! Yes! 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 So that brings us to our next expression, which is the Old Putney 18-year-old single malt whiskey. This is also aged in second fill bourbon barrels and finished in first fill Aurelis or sherry butts. Um, the color on this is not, it, it's, it's got a nice dark old penny to it. Not, not quite as dark as that 15, which is kind of surprising, but oh, it's got a pretty nose. It's almost it's almost like the fifteen. Yeah, I mean it's got that oxidized sherry note to it. A little bit of brown sugar. Oh yeah, like really dark, dark honey. A little bit of cereal note in the nose. Mmm. Elegant. This is one that did need water, because there was a gap until I added water. But once I added water, it just filled out. We'll be back. Hey, and we're back. And I was uh, just wrapping up my thoughts on the old Pulteney 18. So what do you think, Brent? Okay, so for this one, I want to kind of jump ahead and jump back a little bit. This was in the middle because our next one we're going to be trying is a 25-year-old. The last one we had was a 15-year-old. This one fell out of the out of place for me. Like I realize there's not there's really only differences the age and you have the three years age and then the seven year age. But they're pretty much the same. They're pretty much kind of like the wood. same, just weight. Yeah, yeah, just kind of but I got I was for this one to me it was like overly peppered apples. Like overly peppered apples. Yeah. As opposed to appropriately peppered apples. Correct. I don't think I've ever had appropriately <laughs> peppered exactly. apples. Exactly. And that is why I had my mom's apples. And that is my why it was out of balance for me. For me personally, it was out of balance. For everybody else, I realized it was different. But for the people that like my palate, this one just didn't hit it for me. You know what I'm getting? A little sweet tobacco on this. So the people that like his palate. So, so Bill. Okay, Only Bill, one person. don't drink it. Everybody else? Fine. Everybody else drink yeah. it. I don't care. I just it it was out of it was out of the my range of what I enjoyed. He's broken inside. That's okay. I don't no, mind. It's, it's it's basically a lighter version of fifteen year. We can fix him. Yeah. All we have to do is shock it's him. It's a lighter, more Turn elegant it up to version. Three hundred twenty joules. We can shock him and reset his system. He'll be fine. Why don't we just turn him off and turn him back on again? Well, that's the same thing as a reboot. <laughs> but but I prefer the pa- elect the active reboot to the passive reboot. Well, what did you think? I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I, I normally 18 is a sweet spot for me for most whiskeys, and 18 is one of my favorites of most scotches. However, in this series, the 15 was the highlight. The 15 was just angels singing, la, 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 la. The 18 Those was are wonderful. Some bad angels. Yeah. The 18 was Here. wonderful. Here. Hello, this is M12. Finally, by having another video. You hit the wrong button, didn't you? Yeah, but wrong I'm, button. I'm assuming. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. There's I'm assuming that the 18 is. 
more costly than the 15 yeah. but honestly it was slightly the 15 was slightly better so for slightly better and same price or less money i take the 15 every day over the 18 the 18 just keeps getting better in the glass is let it sit the 18 it's is wonderful elegant. i've got nothing bad to say about the 18 is the 15 for more money that's it it's the 15 on steroids more money yeah. but it is not worth twice the price or whatever more i don't even know what it, it costs is. these these whiskeys haven't been available in florida for years get the a15 give me a price on the 18 we'll talk yeah, how's yeah. that what do you think justin so i got usually i'm uh, old pulteney i get apples but i got peppered pears on this one um Peppered pears. He got peppered apples. Pepper. He got Peter peppered Piper apples. Picked a pack usually of I get pears. apples, but I got peppered pears. When I first noticed it, it had a nice wood. That faded off with time. Then I got vanilla, almonds, and cocoa. On the palate, it was sweet and fruity. And the finish was long and fruity. From someone who can't have sugar, I love this. Love it. Okay, that's it. All right. Well, let's move on. So we're going to be rating the Old Pulteney 18-year-old single malt whiskey. A well-deserved four sips. Whoa, 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 whoa. You are so robbing them. I, I'm not. Oh, it was boy. bordering on five, Harm. But honestly, for the money, would you pay the extra money over the 15? Uh, I guess no, the 15 is a different animal. Day. It's a different animal. The 15 is. Get the 15. Get the 15. All right. So, look, Mari, you got the next one. Tell us about the 25. Hold on. I, there's nothing to say. I, I summed it up in one word. The moment the world has waited for. Thank you, sir, for that marvelous introduction. Next, ladies, gentlemen, and those of you who don't fit in either of those categories, we will be discussing the old Pulteney, Putney, 25-year-old single malt whiskey coming in at 46% ABV. And for those who can't do basic <laughs> math, 92 proof. This expression is aged in second fill bourbon barrels. There's a little bit of American bourbon in every sip. And finished in first fill Oloroso sherry butts. All I got to say is I summed it up in one word. Wow. Really one syllable. This whiskey is amazing. Not quite as dark as the 15, but it's got plenty of color. It's dark, deep mahogany. It's got... An amazing nose with lots going on. The oh palate God, is nose. just layers upon layers upon layers. You can dissect out any flavor under the sun on the palate. The viscosity, the mouthfeel. You could just smell it all day long. You can just imbibe it all day long. And the finish just goes on and on. This is as close to whiskey perfection in a glass as I've had in a long time. If you can find this bottle... And I believe it's less of a unicorn than most American it's bourbons. Under a thousand dollars retail, I and think for twenty-five year old whiskey, this is worth three times as much. I would agree. I think this this rivals a three thousand dollars twenty five three thousand dollar twenty five year old Macallan. Oh, it's and, better than that. Well, like I said, we can debate whether it's equal or better, but it is certainly in the same category. It can sit at the same table, and yet it's at least one-third the price. And Harmeet's yeah. going to crack one of those 25-year McCallum, so I could side-by-side side this. Mm -hmm. I just sold my last one uh, two weeks ago. Or not. I got more. I got to order more. <laughs> Maybe not. I, right right after Christmas, I, that those 40-year-old Balvinis went out like that. Oh, my God. Oh, I, yeah? The nice. Best. The 40 year old. How much? Nice. Uh, they're 10 grand secondary. I sold them for seven five. You should have made anybody that buy one Crack open it. it before they leave. So they don't sell it. <laughs> so they don't sell it. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. That, yeah. Yeah. That, guy, yeah. That's guy, what I meant. The open guy it came so you back don't sell it. He, he, bought, he, bought the, <laughs> yeah. he bought the 27 year old. I didn't mean open it so I could drink some. I meant, yeah. That's what I meant. He also bought the 27 year old, the Caroni cask ones. Yeah. He came back the next day, bought the last four year old and the other 27. Okay. So that's it. Okay. What do you think, Brent? Okay. This is a bourbon lover's scotch. Absolutely love this one. I read when I thought that 18 was too old, and you know, and I Some really love the 15. Some 25s are over the hill. You're yeah, right about that. A lot of them exactly. Are. I mean, but I but I was but what I are you Leonardo enjoyed, DiCaprio? No, 18, <laughs> is, the, uh, 18 is 25 the is over the hill, man. You got to trade the, up. Yeah. I enjoyed the 15 so much, and then the 18, I was kind of let agree. down a little bit. I agree. I was expecting the 25 to be over the hill, and then I got to the 25. I'm like, okay, well, how far down did this one go? And it and it went above. 
the way and above, you know, yeah, it just blew it away. It's just kind of like, it's okay, so skip complex. that 18, skip that 18, just move from 15 to 25. Uh, you're going to be just fine. Uh, beautiful. Get it if you find it. Um, it's going to be in my top uh, 10 for the year for sure. I am very aroused. So I'm that old guy that remembers when you could buy a house for $99, but I have to say, this old Pulteney, so good. Oh, my God. Intense, dark fruit, citrus, long finish on the nose. It was like cream of wheat, azaleas, pears. I don't know why. Orange, old licorice, sandalwood. From apples. It keeps, it, old Pulteney used to more. be apples, but now it's pears. There's so much going on. So... Thank you for switching the fruit just to keep life interesting. So good. Green fennel, sandalwood, lemon, orange, licorice. It just keeps coming and coming. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is crazy. How soon can and you that, get this, Harm? Creamy note? How soon can you get this? Uh, it's Friday. Skip the mortgage payment by the Friday. I hate to admit it. He's five. right. There is green fennel. Yeah, it, it's all there, dude. It My fennel is always green. What about uh, you? Man. You can get black I don't have fennel. any fennel at all. Yeah, none. Uh, I mean, to me, green fennel is redundant. It's yeah. like saying now that you can get black fennel, fennel too. That fire fire I mean, fennel. we're recording this in January for broadcast sometime later in the year, but um, we've already. I, I'm telling you right now, I've already hit one of my candidates for best whiskey best in 2024. Whiskey of the year. Yeah, right. Without a doubt, this is just stunning i mean oh this is definitely on the short list i might find something list. as good i don't think i could possibly find anything better at least certainly nothing Not mortals could afford meat. yeah uh, yeah so if the bottle's missing um yeah i'll stab don't you in the surprised. eye <laughs> <laughs> well first you gotta catch me I, 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 think, need, I need to take a sample home for the wife. Oh, she's going to kill me. She'll I think it stuff. is. Uh, I, I think it's. A, I, honestly, I mean, I'm why, why, why are we even bothering? Stuff. I mean, let's let's just be honest. It's five steps. I mean, yeah. five steps. Oh Old Pulteney yeah. 25. If you yeah. have the means, absolutely yeah. Yeah. go out and grab one of these Look, tomorrow. There are 25 year old whiskeys on the shelf at my store. A thousand dollars all the way up to five thousand dollars. And they're all 25 years old. I'm not sure I've had a better 25. Okay. At any problem, oh my God. All right, so let's move on to our last one. No, the not last one. Old Pulteney, and well, oh, not yeah. our completely last one. That's what I'm saying. You guys need to stop chatting. So we're gonna have Justin tell yeah, us about yeah, that yeah, one yeah. quickly. We're gonna talk about Old Pulteney Hodart Single Malt Whiskey, 46 percent alcohol by volume, 92 proof, not age stated. I did not do the math. This expression was named in honor of the street where Old Pulteney Distillery is located, and is finished in casks that once held peated whiskey. Possibly sourced from Ancock. No, Anak. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Lord. So the nose, can't take you anywhere. <laughs> the nose was sweet. I got um, sixth grade Elmer's elements on it <laughs> and vanilla wafers. On the palate, white grapes, lime, lemon, and sea salt. On the finish, it was all cocoa, baby. What did you think, Maury? I was thinking it was more like that finger glue rather than the Elmer's. You know the stuff okay. paste? Sure. Uh, I was thinking it was more Mucilage. like that. You went to a real school. Yeah, yeah. I went to a real school. We yeah, had real glue. Uh, okay, fine. But well, other than that, I think you had it spot on. He didn't get a lot of glue in the box. No. Yeah. No. No. It was fresh off the shelf, man. Other than that, I thought you had it spot on. It was a lovely whiskey. It was light. It was refreshing. It's a complete change of pace from what we've been drinking. So if you rewind about four or five whiskeys and put it back near the Old Putney 12, I thought it was delicious. It was light, fresh, pleasant, enjoyable. It's not a full-bodied, in-your-face, dark, brooding whiskey like we've had in the last three, but it's delightful. Brent? Yeah, this one has a lot of, of those the sea elements to it where you have that little little saltiness to it that comes cut quality and character yeah yeah and, and character see <laughs> carrot you've got carrot carrot cut yeah. quality carrot and character so it's element. another sea element yeah, yeah. You get this the get only this. bad thing about this one is is when i put it in the script i saw that it was in you know 
repeated, repeated tasks. And so I said, let be... me put this at the end. And so, it before the 15th. So this is coming in after that 25. So no matter how hard you focus, you're going to be <laughs> honestly disappointed no matter what it is. But I'm not disappointed in this, though. But I mean, I'm not just, disappointed not in same. it at all. No, it's, you got to change yeah, your mindset. Yeah, it's, you got to change Don't it. do what we did. Don't yeah. drink the old Pultney 25 first and yeah. then drink this. This is this happy. is fantastic. And, and the peat is not strong at no, all it's, it's just it's, it's just a, that wisp. it's yeah. ethereal yeah it's really really lovely I, yeah. I i'm i'm digging this one and and i i have a feeling that this is not expensive so i've got nothing to add give it a rating let's move to lost whiskey dude well this was very much time. more feminine compared to the others which were much more masculine so don't the rush old me. pulteney hutter single me. malt whiskey come on is or is missing feminine attention four sips that's well, we got to give well the whiskey deserved. its due. Well deserved. We got to give the whiskey its due. All, All right. right, our last one, sir. Okay, our last whiskey is Ardbeg Heavy Vapors, forty-six percent ABV, oh. ninety-two proof. Oh, thanks, wow. guys. We yes. love this for you. Okay, so Heavy go. Vapors was the two thousand twenty-three Ardbeg Day limited release during the annual Fes Le Fischila. Yeah, that one too. This Fish. release marks the first Fish. time Ardberg ever to. Still, this whiskey without Bird a pure on ice lay. <laughs> the uh, the apparatus on the still responsible for maintaining Ardbird's unrivaled balance between extreme peat and floral fruitiness. So, this creative experiment by director of whiskey creation, Dr. Bill Lunsom, has allowed the heaviest Lunsom. untamed vapors to rise up to the still during the distillation process before being captured, matured, and bottled. Let's go, Brandon. Ardberg's director of whiskey creator, Dr. Bill Lumsden, commented, "This experiment was something I've always Thank managed, you know. I've always imagined trying. What would happen to the flavor and character of Ardberg as we know and love by distilling in this unique way? Well, it's now time for Ardberg fans to find out. This is a full-blown dram where Ardberg's exalted balance has been disrupted in the most fantastic of ways. A truly captivating dram. Okay, first off." This has no color. It looks Straw. like you're, Sauvignon Blanc. It no, looks like no. you're drinking water. It has it's no color. Clear. I it's would, clear. Yeah, I would, I would disagree with you. It's not, it's not clear. straw. It's not it's clear. It's, it has straw. It's <laughs> clear. Put it back on the white paper background. It's clear. So on the nose, on the nose, you get a really light smoke. You get this little light, light campfire smoke. Tiny. Tiny. It's a light smoke. I'm expecting this big smoke bomb and things. Now on the palate. This is like sitting around a campfire, drinking the campfire smoked as you're sitting back away from it and eating some s'mores. It's just you expect that this is this. It's a very light, light. It's very light to it that you're going to go back and you're going to have this remembrance the next day as you as you go and you smell your clothes in the hamper and they're going to smell like, like a light campfire and that's what you kind of reminds me of. I think. It's. I think it's a hit. I actually like it. I'm I was like, I was like, like oh my god! I was like expecting this thing to His be like this. Is growing. Smoke and bumps. now every bottle of heavy vapors in the United States was bought within a five minute period because Brent actually liked one. <laughs> and his nose is growing as we speak, like just like Pinocchio. What do you think, Justin? This is exceptional. They call it heavy vapors, but it's actually perfectly balanced. It is a great, clear spirit. It actually tastes like really good peated whiskey and not all the weird <laughs> that I had when I was a child. <laughs> Buy this. It's really good. So it's, it's, the thing is, it's heavy vapors. So it's, it smells light, but it tastes heavy. The, well, I, the nose. I don't is, know that it tastes heavy. I mean, it smells like some brightness to it. So it's, go on. it's anise and burnt spices. But on the palate, it's rich and rich and mouth coating, and and I, I I love it. It's crazy good. And the finish goes on forever. You want it blows my mind. Mm. Maury, you got anything for this? No, I don't really have much to add. I think you guys have said it. I think they did a really nice job with it. It's great. It's fantastic, and it's great. All right. Well, Bring we're going to be rating the Ardbeg Heavy Vapors a well-deserved four sips. It deserves five. You are wrong. I didn't oh, vote there's, for... There's yeah. people at this yeah. table. I'm looking at you. Yeah. Bringing down the scores. Yeah. So, well, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank our co-hosts for joining us. Thank you, Brent. 
I said good things about the Arbeg. You can unlock me now, right? <laughs> You're allowed to go home now, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Maury. Thank you, Bob. Another spectacular day in the damp, dark, drippy basement. And thank you, Justin. Usually December is amazing. We have the best whiskeys of the year. This year, it just keeps on going. And thank you, Arm. Thank you, Bob. What a great beginning of 2024. Really yeah, appreciate this that. doesn't stink. Well, for Sip, Suds, and Smokes, this is Made Man Bob. Thank you for joining us. Remember, life is too short to drink bad whiskey. Didn't have to do that today at all. So, yabba dabba dooza. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor and tap. Just tap it in. The subscribe button. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, Uncle Larry, or whoever it is that talks to you on your phone. Play podcast Sip Suds and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram with our handle at Sip Suds and Smokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands, millions, and millions of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor. Take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Come back, join us for another episode, and keep on sipping. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>